Hello, I'm Dr. Tara Bangle, Community Research Manager and Associate with the Smith Institute for Applied Research at Johnson C. Smith University. Today's presentation focuses on how to write an abstract. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to identify the parts of an abstract as well as write your own abstract. First, let's look at the purpose of an abstract. The purpose of an abstract is to provide an overview of your project. It also helps to get others interested in your research. So think about it. When you attend a conference, you're provided with a conference book with a list of all the abstracts. Those abstracts help you determine what research presentations are going to be relevant to you as well as they help to get you interested in attending that presentation. The same applies with a journal article. The abstract tells you if what is presented in the journal article, if it's going to be relevant to you and it's going to entice you to read the full article. There are several guidelines to follow for effective abstracts. First, Abstracts are generally one paragraph in length, and they'll range between 100 and 250 words. These specific guidelines for word count will be established by the journal publisher or the conference host. Effective abstracts also concisely state the major elements of your research project, and they follow the same progression as your paper. So they begin with the purpose, research question and statement, then the methods, the findings come next, and finally at the end you'll find the conclusions and recommendations. An effective abstract contains no new information, and you should be able to understand the abstract and the content there without having to read the paper. Finally, effective abstracts are jargon-free and they're going to be accessible and understandable to a wide audience. The elements of an abstract are again, the same elements you would find in a research paper. Begins with the introduction sentences that explain the topic, uh, purpose and research question. After that, it'll describe what the researcher did. This is where you include your research methods. Next, an abstract will communicate the results. These are the findings or what the researcher learned. Finally, at the end is the so what. What is the bigger impact of your research? I'm going to go through several examples today. In these examples, I'll practice identifying the problem that's being addressed and why, and this will be highlighted in blue. I'll also identify the methods, what the researcher did, and that will be highlighted in this aquamarine green. In the brighter green will be the results. And finally, the olive green will highlight the conclusion and recommendations. Let's begin. Here is a humanities example. You'll see that the problem being addressed is Dostoevsky's ability to encapsulate the darkest and most twisted depths of the human psyche and the impact that this has had on other writers. So here, the researcher reviewed his writing style, biography, and read the novel Notes from the Underground to explore the impact Dostoevsky's most famous outcast, The Underground Man. What the researcher found is that other artists use these same universal themes expressed by the underground man. And the researcher was able to draw parallels between the three writers mentioned. The greater impact is that this paper affirms Dostoevsky's influence and impact on other writers, particularly writers of the underground. In this art example, it again begins with a description of the problem and research statement. 
Here, what the researcher is doing is creating a script to connect the lives of memorable entertainers. What they did for their research was devoted time to watching theatrical performances, concerts, reading interviews, and more. And then they planned for a performance. The result then was a 30 minute cabaret. The impact here was that they discovered how art, especially the performing arts, is a collaborative process that demands discipline, open communication, organization, and much more. In this social science example, we're finding the same consistency in how they write their abstract. They begin by telling us the importance of the problem. HIV virus is destroying all facets of African life and is therefore imperative that a new holistic form of health education and treatment be implemented. For their research, they draw on government and NGO reports and other sources and review access to modern healthcare in factors that inhibit utilization of resources. Their review indicates that a collaboration of Western and traditional medical care and philosophy can help slow the spread of HIV. The paper encourages the acceptance and financial support of traditional health practitioners. This is the overall impact or the so what. Finally, in the STEM example, the purpose of the research is to determine the role of estrogen in cerebrovascular health. To do this, they measured nitric oxide production in isolated cerebral blood vessels. And they found that estrogen can increase cerebrovascular nitric oxide. Finally, the impact or the so what is that what they learned can lead to new treatments for stroke victims. So to review the step-by-step -step process in writing an abstract, you're going to want to begin with one to two introduction sentences that describe why the research was done and what the problem is. Next, you will tell the reader in one to two sentences the methods that you used. How did you go about answering your research question? Following that, you're going to share your findings. What did you learn from your research project? And you will include this by drawing your conclusions and recommendations. This is where you explain the so what and the broader impact of this research. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and found it helpful. If you need additional support, feel free to contact me, Dr. Tara Bangle, at tsbangle at jcsu.edu.